Standerton is a significant town in Mpumalanga, South Africa, known for its thriving commercial and agricultural sectors. It is situated on the banks of the Vaal River and is particularly renowned for its cattle, dairy, maize and poultry farming. Hello and welcome back to our channel. If you haven't done this already, please subscribe and press the bell icon. That way you'll find out every time we bring you a new and exciting travel adventure video. Standerton is a significant town in Mpumalanga, South Africa, known for its thriving commercial and agricultural sectors. It is situated on the banks of the Vaal River and is particularly renowned for its cattle, dairy, maize and poultry farming. As the town prospered, its location became increasingly important at the peak of the wool trade, serving as a midway point between Heidelberg and Martinus Wesselstrom, now Vukestrom. With the discovery of gold on the Witwatersrand, Standerton also became a thriving hub of activity as wagons filled with mining equipment passed through town on their way to Johannesburg. Despite this, a reporter from the Times gave a scathing review of the emerging town in December 1881, calling Standerton one of the dreariest locations on earth. They criticized the town for being made up primarily of corrugated iron sheds, 
with a significant number of them being drinking establishments. During the First Anglo-Boer War, the Boers besieged the British garrison in the town for three months, 29th December 1880 to 26th March 1881. With the exception of a few skirmishes, the Second Boer War had little impact on the town. General Redvers Buller, leading the British forces, peacefully captured Standerton on the morning of June 23, 1900, as the Boers offered no resistance. Buller used John Gibson's residence and was known as Buller's Lodge, is now the town hall today.
Standerton was already a well-established settlement when the railway infrastructure was built. Rail operations between Natal and Standerton began on 27th of August 1895, while a route between Standerton and Heidelberg opened three months later on the 15th November 1895. The original station was erected parallel to Standerton streets and in line with the market square, and it was also on a higher elevation to the west that overlooked the town. The elaborate pointed gables of the raised central section of the roof, which faced the station and the street, gave a characteristic English appearance. Lindsay and Perry built the station construction, which is made of coarsely dressed natural stone in an uneven pattern. It had facilities, waiting arrears, an entrance hall with an office, a luggage room, and offices for the assistant station master and train conductors. The Nederdeutsch Gereformierde Church was established in 1877, two years before the town was proclaimed. The Transvaal Teaching Department later purchased the initial small church building and used it for student education. The second church complex had a near replica design of the church building in Utrecht, KZN, some 160 kilometers away. While the cornerstone of the Standerton Church building was laid by General Joubert on the 25th October 1889, the building went through a revamp in 1895 and 1914 to accommodate 1,500 churchgoers. This beautiful building was sadly demolished some 51 years later in 1941. Erected beside the church is the Burger Memorial to commemorate the area and the Boers of Standerton who gave their lives for the freedom of their people and country. The Standerton concentration camp was located on the Val River, east of the Paul Kruger Bridge. 
the camp was constructed around December 1900 and handed over to civilian supervision in February 1901. Mr. Van Muschenbroek was then appointed by the local district commissioner and the camp was mostly left to its own devices. No records of arrivals or departures being kept as families flooded in, with some being deported to Natal and others relocated to other camps, while at the time the Platron camp was being merged with the Standerton camp. In February 1901, General Superintendent Goodwin reported that the people's situation was pitiable in the extreme. To make matters worse, Dr. Leslie, who had been dispatched from Cape Town, saw the camp and refused to take up his duties, causing considerable inconvenience. Standerton Camp had surpassed its maximum of approximately 3,000 by the end of May, and more people continued to arrive. As housing became scarce, families were sheltered at the local Dopper Church, while others were permitted to reside in the town, much to Moffat's chagrin. During the cold, wet winter, many people grew ill and died from pulmonary complaints and typhoid. The measles epidemic began in September, brought in by children from a group captured by Colonel Colville's column. Apart from the pneumonia outbreak, poor sanitation had resulted in Salmonella, E. coli, and Streptococcus infections by October. 857 women and children died in the camp, Margrietha Swart of Rudekrans lost eight of her children in a 19-day period, in just one of many tragic cases. Soon after the war, Charles Landau, the mayor, presented a memorial fountain in commemoration of the women and children who died in the concentration camp and placed in Market Square. Although the Reformed Church in Crog Street witnessed activity as early as October 1904, the Reverend Martinus Postma 
laid the cornerstone for the new edifice on the 6th of May 1905, on the town's highest point. 65 years later, the church complex required so much upkeep that it was decided to demolish it and build a new structure in its place. The cornerstone for the new church was laid on the 21st February 1970. The Kruger Bridge over the Vaal River linked the road to Volksrust and other smaller towns south of Standerton. The original bridge was built in 1890 by Harcourt in Germany and was named after President Kruger. Before the government invested in the bridge, the German factory was visited where the pre-erected structure was on display. The delegation was clearly satisfied with the quality thereof where after the bridge was disassembled and shipped to South Africa. The bridge is manufactured primarily of coarsed, rough-hewn sandstone abutments and a central pier that supports two 42-metre-long triangulated bowstring trusses, while the tunnel measured 3.6 metres and was flanked on either side by 1.6 metres of footway, the steel superstructure was eventually replaced by standard triangulated steel girders. The construction tender was first given to Fowler and Cobas of Britain, but it was revoked and awarded to Royce. This is South Africa's largest steel span road bridge. After this bridge was completed, the workers began construction, the steel superstructure bridges over the Crocodile River, Showman's Bridge and Sesmilsprut, Vierda Bridge. Out of respect for President Kruger, the Boers did not blow up this road bridge during the Anglo-Boer War. However, the railway bridge did not receive the same respect. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative and entertaining. Please like, subscribe to and share our videos. Your support means the world to us and it allows us to continue creating valuable content for you.